Welcome back to The Unleashing. I'm your host, Jared Beeler. I wanted to do an updated video on the rapture, and uh, if I knew anything else that was going on, if anything's changed along the lines, I said to keep you guys updated, so that's what I'm gonna do. I was gonna shoot this back at the house, but uh, we got puppies running around, dogs barking and stuff, so I figured I'll just shoot it out of my vehicle somewhere. Wind's blowing like a hurricane right now, so hopefully the wind's not too loud, but uh, anyways, I just wanna talk about a few things. The other night I'm driving around, I'm listening to the radio station, CSN, Christian News Channel or whatever, and uh, somebody calls in and they're talking to a couple of pastors and uh, they call in and they ask about tithing and I'm like, oh no, here we go, this is not going to be good because I've heard it so many times, thousands of times, uh, pastors, they're about to start lying to this guy, screw him over and I'm just like, oh no, but I listen to what they say. And uh, the guy asks, is like, Pastor, I've heard that uh, we don't need to do tithing of St. care of, or, but I've also heard other pastors say that we do. Uh, could you give me a, a definitive answer on this? And I'm like, oh no, here we go. And the pastor goes, well, and he kind of laughs a little bit, and he goes, well, no and no. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? I'm like, where's this going? He's like, no, we don't actually have to tithe. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I was like, it's about time. Most of the time you're going to get lied to um, because it's a money-making operation. But this pastor was completely honest and he went through the whole thing and, and I could totally do a video on this. But uh, he told them, you know, tithing was for the Levites. They took care of the temple. It had to do with food. Um, it's no longer needed once Jesus came because the temple's no longer needed. We have that relationship with Jesus. And uh, he basically explained it to him exactly how I knew. I was like, wow, that's amazing. I can't believe he's been honest with him. And uh, and he's like, we're welcome to give money to people. It doesn't have to be money. It can be our, uh, our time spent with somebody, helping somebody out, mowing a yard, anything like that. Basically the same stuff I'm always saying. I'm like, wow, I can't believe this. This is actually refreshing. How nice to hear. And... Uh, he continues on and he goes, in the 35 years that we've been in ministry, we've never asked for anybody's tithes or anything like that. And we've never had a problem with money. God has always blessed us. So it's like, good for them. That is truly incredible, all right? So I'm thinking, you know what? This is really awesome. It's refreshing to hear the truth once in a while come out of some of these pastors. So the next day I'm out driving around and I'm listening to the same channel and it's to every man answer. I like the channel. They talk about different things and it's pretty good, but these guys aren't always right about stuff. And, uh, the night before I was really impressed with that answer. I was like, that's absolutely correct. And, and he told him the truth. The next day, however, we get a call, a, a call comes in the radio station and somebody asks the pastors, Hey, what do you guys know about this revelation 12 sign in September? And what can you, t uh, what can you tell people about it? Instantly I'm going, Oh no, what's going to happen with this? I'm like, do these guys know, or are they going to say the truth? What's going to happen? Instantly. They go back to the same old nonsense, Matthew 24, 36. Of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels in heaven, only the Father only, which has been taken out of context for so long and so many times it's just absolutely insane. Out of all the different contexts it can be uh, put into, they choose the wrong ones and made up. And, and it's been completely taken out and I've iterated this uh, so many times before. It wasn't until the 1500s that we even got verses. So if you want to read the whole thing in context, it makes absolutely perfect sense when you read it in context that he is not referring to the rapture at all. Not only is Jesus talking to the Jews and it has to do with second coming stuff, but immediately before that verse, it says, heaven and earth, Jesus tells him, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And then he goes on to say, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels in heaven, but only the Father only. So if you want to look at it in that, he's talking about the end of the age, after the thousand year reign. All right. And then after that, he leads on to, but you know, watch closely because otherwise you'll get uh, cut asunder. You'll be a part of the portion that's not paying attention. So you want to watch for it. And then in Luke 21, when it goes basically over the same verse, it says, but that hour you'll know perfectly well those who are in Christ and you will see it coming. But those who don't, won't. They won't see it. Well, here we have these pastors that are quoting this, these big wigs. Uh, these are also the same guys that believe that uh, the Nephilim or, or the sons of... Uh, 
the sons of the fallen or uh, the fallen angels. They were uh, the sons of uh, Seth. I mean, it's ridiculous. There's so many times where in the Bible or in Enoch or other books where it's talking about the Nephilim, the giants that were back then. That was these men of renown or whatever that uh, the, from the fallen angels that slept with the women. And they think it's the sons of Seth. You know where they got that idea from? They got that from the Roman Catholics uh, because they believed that the angels couldn't sleep with women. And whatever way they were doing it, whether it was genetically uh, engineered or if they were actually doing it, I, I don't know. But they created these beings and, they, and they're and they trying to deny that too. So it's like, well, how the heck are you going to get the truth about the rap shot about these guys? They go on to say that, uh, you know, it's it could happen at any time, blah, blah, blah. And uh, no, we shouldn't be looking for any particular day. And they t they try to take the hope from these people all these years. Yeah, we absolutely should live a life where, you know, he could come back and we want to represent that. But now we have something he's showing us, a sign, and all the other things that line up with it. And it's like, wow, this is something that we can actually get excited for. For the first time ever, why not get excited for Which I've stated before. This is great. If this really points to it, heck yeah, it's, it's, we're getting to see the finish line. And when you see that finish line in hard troubles you know this is the part of the race where you're like I'm about to give up if I don't see the finish line soon and you see you're like okay there it is just a little bit longer I just got to push a little bit longer and that's exactly what we're doing right now we're just pushing on a little bit longer and we're looking for this I mean Harold Camping uh he, he thought that uh, the rapture was going to happen uh, May 21st or May 23rd, whatever, 2011. Yeah, no problem. I could tear that apart in seconds. Uh, his idea was only on himself. There was no signs aligned with it. It was his own crazy number scheme. He'd failed before, and he believed that the tribulation was five months, not seven years. It's not even scriptural. Sorry, you're out. Uh, then there was uh, December uh, 21st. Uh, 2012, it was going to be the end. Sorry, there's the tribulation at least goes seven years after that. So no, it's not going to be the other. Tear that apart. And any other dumb idea, I have looked into this and I have given it the same judgment as everything else. I can't tear it apart. In fact, only more and more just keeps lining up to it. Now I hear that uh, Bilderberg was looking for a one world leader at their latest meeting they were keeping in secret. Um, now we got Palestinians and Turkey are saying that they want to let the Jews build the third temple. More stuff keeps falling into it, not falling away from it. If something were to come up like the Pope died or, or he went down, I would come on and I'd make a video and be like, okay, this throws off the Malachi prophecy a little bit. Either we can't count one of these guys or maybe this is off in some way and I would describe it the best that my research could do to give it to you guys. Nothing has changed in this area. It's all going straight forward, straight ahead, exactly like it has been the whole time. So for that reason, uh, I can't change anything that I've said before. It, it looks like the rapture is still on for this September. And these big wig pastors that are only in it for money and to deceive people are selling books. And this is going to go along with their book scheme that they've had all this time. For years and years, they've been staying no man knows the day or the hour. And this is less biblical and more more sermon pastor like they've taken it out and put it into their words and instead of taking it actually from the bible and in context they're taking it in their own context out of the bible and that's what they're basically quoting it from like they're above what the word of the what of the word of god says or something like that and it's crazy and another thing that i find interesting is it's us smaller folks when scotty Kirk first found the sign about five years ago when i first saw it of course i thought it was a mid-trip event and i've had to change some different ideas when i'm looking at it of course that's all worked out for the right time because it made me take off early to go talk to my friends and tell them about god you know so if I would have left at the time, like right now, I probably wouldn't have got to talk to all of them. So for that reason, you know, it's important that uh, it happened at this time. But uh, these pastors, they, they're looking at this and they're just like totally blowing it out of the water like it doesn't mean anything at all. And really it does. It's a... Uh, it's one of the biggest signs that we've ever seen, and it lines up perfectly with everything else from the Malachi prophecy, this being the last pope, the 112th, and it also lines up with uh, Daniel's timeline. When you put his years together, 2,550 days, it lines up perfectly with it. So for those reasons, you, you really have to, not to mention the Revelation 12 sign in heaven, if it would have happened on any other day, I've said it before. Let's say this would have happened in November on the 15th or uh, some other crazy nonsense like that. I would be looking at this like, okay, you know what? That's something personal I'm gonna check out. And it's kind of interesting that it looks like the sign from Revelation 12, but uh, when it lands on the Jewish day that's nextly appointed, uh, Feast of Trumpets on the third day of it, 
that's when it's like, well, you got to take this seriously, not to mention on the Sabbath day, on a Saturday is when it takes place. For this reason, you absolutely have to give it some credentials. And these big wigs are not doing it. We saw where uh, Prophecy Watchers not too long ago had, uh, what's his name, Crony on there. And uh, he was trying to shoot the whole thing down. Just got into a whole hissy fit about it. Because he's got books and money out of when he's describing when he thinks a rapture is. And if these guys were honest, they would be able to move and change their ways and be like, you know, I was wrong about this. But they won't accept that at all. They want to be right. And they don't want anybody else looking at it. Here's where it gets interesting. All us little guys that are noticing this sign and taking it seriously and giving it credentials. We're like who Jesus came to talk to back when he came to earth the first time. He was back, he wasn't talking to the Pharisees, which would be your nowadays big wig pastors that are so high and mighty they can discern the weather but they can't discern the times, which is exactly what we see happening right now. But it's given us all hope, us little guys, you know? And, uh, and, and that is really awesome because so many of us are, are looking for this hope, you know? And, and we want to have it and like now we have something to look forward to and it's like this is really cool this could be it why not be excited about it let's say it weren't happen would it be dumb not to be excited about it? absolutely not I've done my due diligence I've looked at this in every single way I have put the prophecies into it it adds up with the times that we're in it I can see things taking place it looks like we're about to go into World War 3 and a worldwide economic collapse I know those are the first seals that break it's like yeah okay I've done my diligence here this looks like it could be it heck yeah I'm gonna get excited about it let's say it doesn't happen all right did I do anything wrong by getting excited absolutely not I'm always gonna be excited to see God uh, I've been looking for it for this uh, moment since I was a little kid so I mean this is gonna be the greatest thing this ever. Is something it really looks like heck yeah I'm gonna get jacked about it and I want to share it with other people and tell them about it so they can be happy too because the more people we can tell the more people we can still go out and talk to family members everything like that if you haven't talked to your family about it you know at least bring it up in a, a subject conversation so they can do it uh, I got that rapture video out show them that if uh, if that's easier for you to do anything like that that, that helps people know you know but but everything is still on and it still is all pointing towards it and more stuff just keeps adding to it and adding to it nothing's being taken away from this sign uh, more stuff's going on to it and it's more interesting that like I say these big wig pastors that have been robbing Christians for years and leading them astray in these buildings called churches which is completely the opposite of what it was supposed to be the aramic hebrew word for church that we have in the bible and use in english was called out ones those who choose to follow christ has absolutely nothing to do with the building now they try to say that it does has nothing to do with it i could show you some more stuff including down to steeples that we have on churches which is just the phallic from osiris that they brought over from the roman catholic church uh, they probably wouldn't like you to know that though but there are so many fallacies and things that are wrong with it, it's ridiculous. If you go to a little one and uh, they, they preach the word and they talk about revelations and other things like that, that's great, but most of them don't. And uh, you don't think that I know all this stuff by going to church, do you? No, I know this stuff because I got out of it and I talk to God and have a personal relationship, exactly what he wants all of you to have. Would I ever recommend church? Maybe for a year, but it's like kindergarten. You go in there, you learn your basic stories like Noah had two animals of every kind, seven of the clean on the ark, or or some other stories about David and Goliath and you get out and you grow that personal relationship with Jesus where you go to him instead of having a pastor that you go to that you believe is more holy every single person Jesus gave us the right to go to the Father through him with a relationship with him every single one of us have that relationship and the reason I know this stuff is because I've been growing it my whole life by having a personal relationship not going to some pastor that's lying to me about stuff and just like every, all of you you might not know about tithing and other things like that I didn't know that stuff either and I did it for a long long time and it was God that pulled me out of that after praying to him about this stuff and church as well in 2013 I said I wanted to be closer to him that year he started pulling me out of the church I'm like what's going on here aren't we going the wrong direction should I be like helping out more only to come around full circle at the end of the year I should do a video on church and tithing and just uh, lay out my whole story so you guys can see where I'm coming from but it's this relationship that I've had with him and when I was 21 when I asked him to show me the secrets of the universe I told him God if you could show me this would be great I'd love to know how it all lines up together but if you don't no matter what I'll have faith in you and I always will because I choose you he liked that answer and he showed me all this stuff and now I have a channel called the unleashing where I'm trying to bring it back to you the people so that you can all understand and see where I'm coming from all this this has all been looked into discerned over years I'm giving you the best filtered information that I possibly can that I have that's been given to me by God and I just want everybody to know that they all have that right and personal relationship they can have as well too um, 
we don't need to be going to pastors and things like that. And when they try to push us away from stuff that looks like it's legit, you know what? You don't have to listen to them. You can go straight to God and you can talk about it. But I'm telling you, everything is screaming at this sign coming up in September with all the other signs and all the other prophecies coming together that look absolutely perfect for the time of the rapture. And, uh, and everything's still go, it's still go for launch as far as I'm concerned. So, you know what? Until something changes and I tell you, hey guys, something's changed here, um, I'm going to keep saying the same thing. This looks like it's it. I've only looked at this as a detective and I'm only giving you the best information that I possibly can, uh, the viewer, you know? So uh, keep your heads up, keep looking up, and uh, try and tell as many loved ones as you can about this because it still looks like it's about to happen. And uh, I hope to see you all in the sky soon because the way the world's looking right now, the only way out of this is uh, just like Ellie Marzul he's always saying and that's the truth and uh you know what be encouraged because uh hopefully we're almost out of this mess and uh i couldn't be more excited about it so uh god bless and i'll see you next time on the unleashing thanks a lot bye